Welcome back to the Talk Like No One's Listening podcast. It's been a really long time. The last episode I did, this is only the second episode I'm doing in 2020 so far. It's June. The last one I did was in January. So I'm slacking about as bad as you can slack. But I think you'll understand it's been a hectic year, right? Thank you. I started the year off just working, working my ass off up until people weren't allowed to work anymore. And then since that happened in March, I've been trying to just lay low, take care of what I need to take care of in my own life, reevaluate what's going on in life, try to pay attention, read up, research what I can to try and stay informed. And every time I would get to a certain level of feeling like I understand something, the situation changes, the situation gets crazier, people get crazier, and people get killed. And then it gets crazier. And fast forward, you know, you know what happened. You, you were there. So we're in, we're in June, mid-June, believe it or not. And the last three months of me trying to figure things out, I came to some conclu- not conclusions, because I don't want to say it's like ended, but I just came to some realizations that were really on the scale of just life in the big picture. I I started out just trying to focus on the here and the now and try to find understanding about the situation that the world is in right now and now focus to the situation America is in. But the more I try to just understand more localized recent present issues the more I go into it and I realize whatever is happening now is just the result of things that have been happening in the past so for that I realized well the answer to what's happening in the present is in the past and that's just a general thing that about life in general you could say that about anything but I think why that is such an important thing is that now people are trying to they're trying to fight back against forces in the world that they feel are oppressive and discriminatory and just straight up evil it's we're we're literally in living in the battle of good versus evil right now And in the end, that's the only battle that matters because that's what it really all comes down to. And that's the battle that's worth fighting and worth winning. But if you're gonna, Jesus, if you're going to fight that battle, wouldn't it be better to be prepared, to be informed, to know what you're up against? Once all this stuff started happening in the last month about 
police brutality against the black community, which is for the craziest thing, is a lot of people in America, that's no secret, that that's as plain as day. And then for another large chunk of people, they're just more, they're just oblivious to it. And what happened through social media, which is really the lifeline to society right now because we've all been in this lockdown type of situation where people aren't, well, they haven't been out and about mingling with, with each other to talk and be face to face. So the way that the world has been communicating with itself has been through the internet a combination of social media, news, direct to, you know, communication through video calls and conferencing and things like that. And it's just a lot going on. It's the whole world trying to talk at the same time. It's everybody's trying to have a conversation at the same time. So what do you have? You just have just a gigantic ocean of voices and opinions and perspectives on what's going on. And everybody has the right and should voice their opinion if they choose to. And from all of this communication amongst all of society, people can begin to come to an agreement somewhat on at least agreeing on, trying to agree on what is the problem and then what are we gonna do about it? What is the solution? And once all this started happening with the Black Lives Matter Matters movement, which, I mean, has already been happening. It's already been a movement, but with what has happened recently with the masses of people on social media promoting the ideas of justice for those that have been victims of this oppression and racism and inequality everybody wanted to say their part and that's great everybody wanted to pick a side and root for their side and for the most part it was all good it was all positive everybody's for the side of good and not for the side of evil and it's pretty clear to see for most humans who's good and who's bad in the situation so people wanted to show the support, and that, that was great. And that's just, you just saw a huge outpouring of posts and communications and, and just videos and shared documents and videos and all this information going out there. And that was great. I myself have not posted anything on social media since all of this has been happening because I just never felt like up until now, even still now, I, I didn't feel like I had the thing that I wanted to say. The idea hadn't formed yet because the more I thought about it, the bigger it got, the bigger the idea, the bigger the concept got in my head about what is actually happening and what do I want to say about it. I don't need to post the same thing that a lot of other people are posting. We all, people all agree, you know, I don't need, to, I'm not interested in doing posts that are preaching to the choir. And I've never really been one on social media to post things that are like a political nature or a social commentary nature. To me, like social media was two things things kind of it's just entertainment in a way is this eye candy is this something to look at to read things that are interesting to you for fun 
And to, for me, just to have, like most people, professionals and uh, creative individuals, it's, it's just your page where people can find you, find your work, connect to you. And it's just a hub for everything that you do. And I never, I never really was into being a very critically voiced opinion on social media. Because what I'm, the times that I have done that in the past, when I was, when it, like social media was new, I would post stuff and not really think about it too much. I would post articles, information, pictures, things like that. That was information that I felt like I wanted to share. And when I would do that, come back to it, you know, give it some time, maybe just a couple of days or a week and look back, I would feel like that's not exactly what I wanted to share now that I think about it. And I realized that it's such a different perspective, a different headspace of when I come across some information that to me is very intriguing and it could be information of many different topics, but it could be, let's just say, things that are controversial, conspiracy theory ideas. And I don't like that phrase, but that's, you know, information like that, that is controversial. I would, re I just realized that I was doing that and in my own mind, I, I didn't even fully understand the information I was going over, but I would post about it. And then I realized what, I don't want to do that anymore because I don't want to post some shit that I don't fully understand myself just because it sounds interesting. So I, I just decided to keep stuff to myself when it came to that kind of thing. And I just thought it'd be better just to keep it simple with my social media, to post stuff that's like kind of just humor, light humor, nothing serious, not to be uh, opinionated and not to say stuff about opinions about other people, good or bad, and just to share stuff from my professional life. I figured that kind of stuff, I'm fine with that. You know, it's stuff that can happen. I can just in the moment post something and it's just whatever. It's not, it's not of much consequence. But now with what's happening in the world, I feel like I do want to say something, but I'm just trying to be very, mm, not careful. I just want to make sure that I'm saying what I really, really want to say. But it's hard when you don't fully understand what it is that you want to express. I have these feelings, I have these thoughts, and I don't always fully understand exactly what it is because we're living in such a, a new type of situation in the world that it's, we've never been through this. I've never been through this. So as it goes on day by day and week to week, it gradually is changing more and more. Now that we have a combination of a continued self-quarantine lockdown type of situation that's it's starting to lighten up and certain things are going back and opening up again but it's still not not over with at all nobody knows at this point how much longer it could go and then now you have the social unrest and and protests happening nationwide and with all that comes more feedback, more data, more information, more reports, more stories. And I tell myself that I should probably just not worry about that and focus on my own life and my own personal life and just make sure everything is straight. And 
yeah, I'm doing that too, of course. But at a certain point, I feel like also to be able to handle your personal life, you do need to know, you do, you do need to understand well what's happening outside in the world and as far as how it might affect you in your personal life. So it's a balance of paying attention to what's happening out there and what's happening here at home. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I had mentioned before, I am, wow, it's getting crazy, what the fuck? That's just how I feel about life in general. What that sounded like, what you just heard, just the sound of something gradually, a mysterious sound just gradually like getting faster and faster. It's just, oh. I like this though. This is a good representation of how I feel inside my brain right now. All these thoughts and feelings and all this data just bouncing around. So a little bit about myself that I probably haven't talked much about on this podcast is that for the past, well, since I've been in music, which is now about 12 years since I've been working in music, I've been researching and reading about things that people call conspiracy theories. Now, at this point, like I said, I don't like that term because that term itself is created, was created to discredit people that are into alternative theories of, or alternative ideas about just what is happening in the world. And I don't even think you, ha at this point, with how much information has spread around the internet from all these years of people sharing, sharing information, there's been enough stuff that has gone around that is documented factual proof of things that have happened in the world by countries, by governments, by militaries, by corporations, by people, conspiracies by the actual definition of the word being a secret criminal plan carried out by a group of people, two or more. That's all it is. Two or more people get together and they secretly plan to do something that's illegal. That's a conspiracy. Has that happened in the history of humanity? Yes, obviously. Crime happens. Yeah, occasionally people commit the crime by themselves, but crime happens in groups. So there you go. And sometimes they're small, sometimes they're big. Sometimes they're really fucking big. Sometimes they blow your mind how big some of these conspiracies are. And like I said, there's enough information out there that's easy to find about events like this that have happened throughout history that are factually true so there's no theory so i understand i've been because i like i said 12 years of me reading and researching about this stuff i've figured out that you have to give things time before you start leaning towards thinking that they're true because as for any story, for anything, you know, there's different sides of the story. And it's just you, until you get all the information or you, until you get a certain amount of information, you, unless you were there, you don't know for sure what happened. So anyways, for people that know me in real life that have conversations with me, it's most, most likely something like this has been talked about and there's a lot of podcasts that I listen to that that talk about this kind of topic and it's something that I, I really enjoy following and but I didn't ever think that I wanted to have a podcast 
where I went over these kind of topics and I researched them and I reported on them. Just because I just didn't feel like that was worth my time. There's so many other people doing that. And to me, I, I feel like you have to take it very seriously if that's what you want to do and you want to take be taken seriously. Because if you're going to bother to try to report on things like that, you got to have, you got to do your research and it's got to be thorough. And it's like, you have to be able to argue your case for why you think something is true. An event happened, something secret that the government's doing or somebody's doing that's kind of evil, but it's happening and you want to let people know. Well, if you're going to bother to talk about that, you got to be able to prove it very convincingly. Nobody cares about, well, not nobody cares, but there's no point in preaching to the choir. There's no point in sharing conspiracy theories, true or not, theories or facts, with people that are going to believe it anyways. The whole reason why you would want to share information is you want to bring it to people that are not aware of it or they don't think that it's true and you want to be able to present your evidence well enough that you convince people that are on the opposite side to me that's that would be the right reason the right cause for deciding to be a researcher in this kind of field and for me i just I didn't, I'm busy, like, like I said, like I've only done these podcasts. The last one I did was in January. So even just having time to sit down and record me talking about nothing, I found it hard to find time for that. So on top of that, trying to just do a bunch of research and get all my facts straight and get it all organized to report. I just didn't want to do that. But I do feel like there is something a conversation to be had without getting deep into all of that. And this is all kind of connected to why I didn't want to post anything on social media and voice an opinion about the current situation because I feel like it's just way, way, way too big for a social media post. I, I am for I am for the fight for justice for all the victims. But I think people always have to question their approach and their methods and think about, is this really the best way to achieve the goal of, of getting justice for what's going on and righting the wrongs in society? And there are things that I don't agree with. There are things that I see that I feel like aren't so effective. One of them is social media. Uh, just the way people use it, just the nature of social media, how it's just this tiny little, small little bits of information that gets shared through posts. And it's very small little, little, little slices of life, tiny, tiny little slices of life. And this is what everybody is taking in to form the picture, the big picture in their mind. And I feel like the picture is a big, big, big picture. So I'm talking now on this episode of this podcast, which to me is kind of like a throwaway because I just, I'm doing it just to clear my head. But I feel like these are long, long conversations to be had. These are not quick posts of a picture or a hashtag or a phrase or just whatever. It's much, much bigger than that. I don't think that's enough. Sharing, sharing posts that show support for a cause with a hashtag, I think it, it, it produces the big picture into one small little tiny thing. Like it's all like, like that's all it is, is like one little tiny thing, but it's not, it's a huge gigantic thing. That's, it's the whole world. And it's the whole history 
of the world is what we're dealing with now. It's not a leaf that's on the ground. It's the forest where that leaf came from. A forest of trees that are centuries old. So going around and sharing photos of leaves on the ground, individual leaves on the ground, it's like, yeah, I get it. Leaves are on the ground. What do you want to do about it? We don't like leaves on the ground. Let's just imagine hypothetically leaves on the ground is bad for humanity. And if everyone's going around taking pictures and sharing photos and stories about leaves on the ground, they keep finding leaves on the ground. Well, we can't just keep complaining about the leaves on the ground. We can't even just try to clean up the leaves on the ground. If you really want to do something about it, get rid of the forest that's producing all those leaves. Now, that's not necessarily, that's a good and a bad analogy in my head because obviously leaves on the ground do not hurt people and I don't want anybody, we don't want to burn down forests, obviously. Forests are good. But the idea being that what we're seeing with, what we're dealing with on the streets, what people are seeing and dealing with and reporting on in the streets is the product of something that's been going on for a very long time. And I don't think that's like a big secret. Everybody knows in America, there's a very, very long history. I mean, the entire history is a history of racism and oppression. That's it. We're Americans. That's what it is. That's no secret, especially if you're a minority. Uh, I'm, I'm Asian American, but it's my ex experience growing up was not bad, but it was enough to make it clear as day to me that what this country is all about. To not uh, be, I, I didn't grow up living in. A, a community that made me feel like, oh, I'm just part of everybody else and we're all good. We're all like middle to upper class. We're all affluent. We're doing well. So that's life. That's the country. We're all just cool. We're all the same and we're all doing well. And it's like, no, I've, I've seen since I was a kid that there are the differences of people. I, I grew up in a town with only a few different groups of minorities. I was, there was my schools that I went through. There'd be like me and maybe a couple other Asian kids, a couple other Mexican Latino kids, a couple black kids, but like that was it. 90% white, I would say, for most of my time going through public school. And I would see how people act and talk to different groups. I was friends with all these different groups. Friends with, I mean, I had friends that were of all the different minority groups, along with some friends that were white. And I could see the differences of how everyone got treated, the differences of people's home lives when I would go hang out with them and see how different families were of different, different ethnic groups, racial groups. And I just always knew. I, I knew that I was not a part of the mainstream of America. I mean, obviously, I knew my mom, my parents were immigrants. They came from another country. They came from Korea to America. That was no secret to me. So I knew, especially also when you have kids making fun of you, it's pretty clear. But, like I said, one important thing is to go back into history. And not the history we went, we learned in school. Not the history you, you learn through the mainstream, because that is not the real history. And that's for a reason. I think this pretty much goes for most of the world, most countries. 
school is a thing to make sure that kids feel like their country is good, that they're the good guys and they do good things. To make sure that the kids grow up and want to continue on the society that they live in, the nation that they are a part of. Continue it, keep it going. Support it, contribute to it, be a part of it for another generation. It's in, it's not in the best interest of any nation to teach its kids through school all the bad things that they've done. Because then the kids don't want to support and contribute to the society and keep it going. So it doesn't take you long to just read and research and learn about history in your country and find lots of things that are not good about what happened in your history. And I've, I've been reading some books and things like that. And there's always, I always find things that are relevant to what's going on now by reading things about the past. Real quick, one book that I just finished was called Chaos. And it was a book about Charles Manson, his cult following called The Family and how the events that happened with him and his cult following committing a bunch of murders in the late 60s, 1969 to be exact, how that all was connected to the government, the CIA, to the police, as an, ev an event, as events that were designed and allowed to happen for political reasons. Now, most people didn't think about that way. For people that, were, that are older, that were around when that happened, or at least old enough to just be somewhat familiar with who Charles Manson is and what the murders were, the official story, what got written about and told about in court and written about in books was that, yeah, he was a cult leader. He had a crazy following and they wanted to just kill people. They, they had reasons for killing specific people. And it was just, that's all it was. And it was just a, an event that made people feel like, oh, this is what hippie culture is about cults and drug-filled orgies and mind-controlled followers and people that would just go out and be homeless together, live in these communes, be dirty, not take showers, not shave, and kill people. And what I read in this book through uncovering the history of, the real history of what happened is that it was all very much an orchestrated thing because the U.S. has a history, a recent history, really. It's, it's all been in the past, you know, 60, 70 years that they've set up programs to infiltrate dissident groups, to, to infiltrate organizations and groups that are counter to the mainstream, counter to the status quo. And that would be during the civil rights movement with groups that would follow Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, the Black Panthers, the women's rights feminist movement, the hippie kind of culture movement, all these different things had been infiltrated by undercover agents to get in there, find out what they're about, what their plans are, figure out how to mess up their plans. 
how to sabotage their plans so that they would not succeed in fighting back against the status quo of America, which is, like I said, built on centuries of injustice. And when you take that into consideration, how far the establishment will go, the lengths that they'll go to squash any dissent in a country that everyone thinks is like the perfect model for democracy and freedom, you realize that that's all just a game. It's all just a show. The idea of exactly how much freedom we have we think freedom, we're free, free, like like free is free, right? Like infinity is infinity, so we're free, but actually no, it's quite limited. We have enough of it to have it seem like it's unlimited and we're as free as can be, but we are contained, we are limited. And for these type of events to be happening way back in the 50s and 60s and to see footage of protests and riots and social unrest from the 60s look just like footage that you see in 2020 that tells you things really haven't changed. On the surface they have, but at the core, at the foundation, everything is the same. So, the point I make in my in my mind about all this and why I wouldn't want to, I don't feel like me posting to social media is not for me and not a way that I think is helpful is because trying to just attack and fight back against street level injustice is not gonna get it done. It's not really gonna change anything. Yeah, things will change in the way that police departments have to operate and train their officers and deal with misconduct and things like that. Yeah, for a while, they'll clean up. You know, they'll know, they'll know that the public is watching and then that's a thing. It's like people, when they know someone's watching, they can just not do the thing that's bad, but that doesn't mean they've changed and they're not bad people anymore. They just realize, oh, well, just don't do that because people don't like that. Oh, okay. But the actual system that had been allowing that to happen for so many years is still in place. And by going back to history and realizing that it, these plans, these operations were put in place and designed to infiltrate opposing organizations in American society. That came from the top, the top down. So that tells you at the top, that's how they feel about America, about the people. They don't want the people to really have a voice. They don't want people to unite, organize, and fight for positive change for them. They want everybody to go back to sleep. Go back to watching what well, they tried for many years to get everybody to just stay home, watch TV, watch the news, watch movies, watch your sports, read the newspaper, go to school, go to your job, day in, day out. Just be regular people that just go along with the whole show. But we've now reached the point where one of the great things of the internet and social media and the way things work is that there's so much alternatives, so many alternatives to what used to be the mainstream of media and information and 
and influence, which was when I was a kid, there's TV and the newspaper and magazines. That's it. That's where you get all your information from. And those are all things controlled by very few people. So it's very easy to control the information that was going out to everybody. There wasn't a lot of channels. There just wasn't a lot of options. But now you have every option available to you to get information about whatever it is that you want to know about. So now that that system of control is really no longer in play, the establishment, I feel like they got to come up with other methods to keep everything unlock and just look around well, look what what's happening in the world right now uh, the way it looks to me and the way I've just read about the way the world works who are the people in power that decide that the way things work in the world to me it's This is all, I don't know. It's real, but it's also not real. I, I just don't like to take official versions as the truth anymore. So whatever mainstream news is saying about a current situation, I just wait and I, and I just try to find information on my own. That's credible, but that's just not being spoken. I'm sorry, I just lost my train of thought. Um, anyways, I, I just tried to find credible information about what is happening in the world. And I try to get it from many different sources. And often it's conflicting and it's confusing to hear conflicting information from maybe two or three different sources that are all credible sources, but they're not saying the same thing. That gets very confusing. And that's why, another reason why I haven't said much. I haven't posted about anything because I'm just every day, I'm just trying to go through my head and figure more stuff out. You get more information that's like, okay, I started to see a picture that looked like this. And now I just got this new information that changes all of that. And all of it seemed like credible information. So now I don't know. So I've just constantly been in this state of I don't know. And let's just keep looking. Let's just keep going down the path, keep going down the rabbit hole, and let's just see. And in Throughout all this time, what I've been seeing from everybody posting online is everybody is trying to contribute towards a positive outcome. And that's great. In my head though, I thought, okay, how, how can we really win though? How can humanity, the masses, the majority, the 99%, how can we all together win? What's the positive outcome for all of us? How can, what is that and how can it actually be achieved? So thinking, thinking, thinking every day. Seeing people out in the streets protesting there's some good that can come of that, for sure. But it's not just that. In thinking of more of a philosophical approach, everything that exists out there in the world externally came from people internally. From ideas, thoughts, feelings that people had, they brought that to the world and created things. 
They created nations, they created products, they created culture, belief systems, religions, whatever. Like all this stuff came from people and how they feel and think inside. So one reason why I believe people have not been successful why they haven't been successful in the past when they've tried to march and protest for justice. What I feel is been part of that is that they form groups. They form a group that is the group for justice, for positive change. And I think in this type of battle of good for versus evil, it's important to understand the tactics that evil will use to defeat good. And they've been at it for a very long time. The evil has been succeeding at being evil longer than good has been succeeding at good. So I would say evil has the advantage because evil is the minority. Evil is like 1%. It only takes that 1% that's truly evil that can control the 99% of people that are good. And yeah, they know what they're doing. They have tactics. They understand how people think. They understand human psychology. They understand how humans act in groups. And they use that to their advantage because they are such a small group. So they just know as long as everybody gets together and they're all on the same page and they want to join a group, they want to join a cause, they want to have a name for their movement, they want to have a hashtag. You don't have to control all those people, you just have to control the movement, the organization. And that's why they've done this tactic in the past where they infiltrate a group, an organization to take control of that. And then all you do is by controlling a few people that are at the top of that organization, you control all the people that are the followers. So in my perspective and my view of things, what people have to do is yes, like talk and agree and be in a group somewhat as far as being on the same page as, you know, fighting for the same the same goal, but people have to do away with groupthink. Like everybody has to do the research themselves. They have to study themselves and research and, and information for themselves and they have to decide for themselves how they think and feel about that. Because it's pretty easy to just join a group because it just, yeah, it's for a good cause, so join the group. But what do you actually know about the group? What did you actually know about the situation before it became a popular thing to join? When you don't really know and you're just joining because it's like a popular thing to do, you can be, you can be misinformed, you can be misled because you don't fully understand what it's about. But if everybody, it's a big thing to ask, but if everybody were to take it upon themselves to be individuals, solid, sovereign individuals within the movement and all have their own reasons for being a part of it and supporting it, like they all took the time to do their own homework and come to the same conclusion, then that's how you know it's really solid and it's undeniable. And that's also how you know the group won't be defeated by these tactics. Because if everybody themselves has done the work and has come to the same conclusion and understanding about what is happening and what needs to be done, then you can't mislead, you can't mislead that group. Because it's much easier for everybody else to see when some bullshit is going on. It's much easier to see when somebody is trying to come in and meddle with the affairs.
and mislead the group and create infighting. Basically, you can't have a leader in that group. Everybody has to be a leader. There can't be a head that you can cut off and kill the group. That's, all, that's the ultimate weakness in this type of thing. So everybody has to take it upon themselves to be the leader in their own life. And I think that really is the key. That is the key to humanity really coming out on top. And humanity living in a world, in a society created for humanity by humanity. Everybody. And I don't think it doesn't have to be the thing where people automatically go to, are you talking about socialism? Are you talking about communism? No, it's just people like knowing how to just live. Like I, I think about this, just if a hundred people get stranded on an island, like the show Lost, except it's not, they're not lost or just, it's not so fucking weird and made up all the time. But let's just say, hundred people stranded on the island and they got to figure out how they're going to live. All right. Well, they're going to figure out, okay, who's good at what? Who knows how to build shit? Who knows how to fish? Who knows how to hunt? Who knows how to plant a garden? Who knows how to make clothes? And if you just expand this out to the whole world or a, a country, it's like, yeah, you'll find people right now that all those things are being done and being made. So those people out there exist. So let's just say on this island of 100 people, everyone does what they know how to do and they do it as a contribution to the community. And all you, you know, you keep it to, you know, simple rules of don't steal, don't kill and don't hurt people basically. Let's all just like live together and we all do what we do, can do to contribute. And then other than that, just chill on the island. Live life, enjoy it. Be happy. You know, it's okay if you don't like certain people. Well, don't be on the same island as them. Whatever. That might uh, s seem very simple and it's probably obviously not thought through, but what I'm just trying to say is that the only version that I see in the future of society really living in a good way that's good for most people is one where everybody is independent, is capable of being independent. Everybody is capable of taking care of themselves. And to me, that's just a matter of education. But that's exactly what you don't have in the world today. What you don't have in society is this education to create strong individuals, strong, responsible individuals. That is not what you get out of the school system. You go through 12 years of public school, you graduate high school, and what are you left with? Out of 12 years of your life, of your childhood, your most important developmental years, 12 years, what do you come out with? You come out with zero value in the job marketplace. You come out with zero life skills. You don't know through school, you are not taught anything about banking, finance, credit. You're not taught about how to grow food, hunt, fish, whatever it is, just food. You don't have any idea of how to create it, produce it yourself. You don't know how to make clothes. You don't know how to make a structure, build something, build a chair, build like anything. The things that are most crucial to just humans just living on a day-to-day -day basis 
we don't know how to do any of that. We're not even taught how to just be responsible people. Never mind skills, usable skills. Just 12 years of school, all it does is take that 12 years of your life and leave you with nothing. And that's on purpose. I, since I graduated high school, which was 20, more than 20 years ago, I've been thinking about this. From the day I graduated, what the fuck just happened to me? Why did I, why am I useless? What did I just spend all these years going to school for when I don't know anything of practical use? I can't get any job that's besides something minimum wage at a, a fast food restaurant or something entry level like that. That's it. And then the solution is, oh, because you got to go to college to get the real job. Oh, and then I did go to college though. I mean, I did get a job, but I didn't have to. I didn't have to go through all of that, especially for what I do now, going to music. Working in music, going to music school was definitely not necessary. But in 12 years, if you can't teach somebody how to be a responsible, independent person living in society, then you have failed. But I also now, after 20 years of thinking about it, I understand if they didn't fail, they succeeded. Because that exactly, that's exactly what the plan was. They need people, they need everybody to be dependent on this system that we live in, of society. In order for it to continue going on and for things to stay the same, for the people that are at the top that have designed and controlled and operated this society, in order for them to stay at the top, everybody has to go through the same program and become dependent on the system so that we're, we're just... Each generation comes and the majority of us are just fuel for the engine to keep going. But now that I have now that I'm a parent, I'm raising a child, and I, with all this perspective that I have, and also just raising a child and, and really seeing what ch what children are capable of, I, I think in 12 years, that's all you need, honestly. You can learn everything you need to be able to live the rest of your life and handle your own life and live the life that you want and follow your own path and be independent and not be dependent on this system. You can live the way you want to live if only you are educated and guided towards that. So I think once all of this, the current situation that we see once we get some resolution to that. The positive thing that I'm looking towards forward to is that the people's attention will now shift to the next thing, the next part of society that is wrong, that's unjust, that is not for the people, for the benefit of people. And there's a lot. America is all fucked up. The world's all fucked up. Uh, especially in America, there's the medical system. That's probably next. And then I would say education. I see within the next few years, those two things will be the next thing that people will go after because... And, and look f and call for and fight for reform and change because... That's it. It's, it's gone far enough. People have the, the momentum. People have the will now. 
which is great. They have the vision. They have. They have. They understand now more than ever that this is how we can move into the future and have a future. Because you can look at the way things are now, and if people really just kind of keep falling for the same tricks, then it's going downhill quick. All right. Well, I didn't really expect to say all of that. I didn't expect to say anything because I, I, I'm just, like I said, I thought this was going to be a throwaway. And this was just going to be a warm up for me to just get back into speaking. But there you go. I just, uh, I just put down a one hour oral essay. So I'll be doing more because I probably had to listen to this and realize I said a bunch of stuff that I'm like, no, that's actually not what I want to say. Or could be good. And I actually said everything I did want to say and it worked out. But either way, I, I think, like I said, the, the things that I'm thinking about that I want to say are, are too big for social media. So luckily we have podcasting and even though I don't have a lot of people following, that's fine. I just want to say this stuff, get it out of my head and I feel much better after doing so. So I encourage anybody else out there who's feeling like this, who's feeling like their brain is just just a tornado of thoughts and they can't seem to get it to settle down. This is one great way to do it, to clean house, to get some clarity in your own mind. You don't even have to make a podcast, just like record yourself talking into your phone, make a voice memo, go in your car and just be by yourself and just record and talk. And you don't have to even share this with anybody. Just do it. It will help. This has been the Talk Like No One's Listening podcast, episode 26. Thank you if you got this far. Check you next time. Peace. <laughs>